what I wanted to gather you guys here today for is talking about how I automate my post production. Now, I think post production is one of the less fun aspects of being a photographer, right? Like, unless you truly enjoy editing. And even if you are one of those photographers who love editing, my guess is that you love editing the select few photos that you get to really turn into these masterpiece pieces and not editing like, you know, the thousands of photos that come through, like say from a wedding. So um, to give you a little backstory about me, I was a physics teacher, high school physics teacher. In my last two years of physics was when I started my photography business. Now I dreamt of becoming a full-time photographer, but I didn't think it was really possible. You know, I think just messages from my family and my parents, you know, overall they were not encouraging. And I was kind of led to believe that photography and anything creative for that matter is a hobby and not a business. So I would, it was okay for me to do it as a side hustle. It was okay for me to maintain my real job as a teacher and run photography as a hobby on the side. Now, the good thing is that I quickly realized my photography was able to sustain me and it picked up really fast. And I was then able to quit teaching and pursue photography full-time because for two years, I was running two full-time businesses at the same time. And I was really overwhelmed. I was teaching from you know seven to three. I would run off to do either a portrait session, engagement session, family session, and you know, for golden hour, come home, edit lesson plan, you know, edit way into the night, like 2 a.m., and then rinse and repeat the next day, right? And what I realized was that um, it almost burned me out. Have anyone experienced burnout? or close to burnout, yeah. So, you know, I think to give you a full understanding is like, I almost quit. There were a few moments in my career where I almost quit. A um, Couple things was, I thought it was too much work. Maybe I should just continue shooting for fun and not running the business because the business side was too much work. Um, I'm not making, maybe a steady salary sounds good you know, after a while, I'm like, gosh, like I'm hustling every month. Maybe just having a salary and doing this for fun sounds really good right now. Um, and then a couple other things too that made me want to quit. For example, unsatisfied clients. When I get that email from a client who's not happy, or even worse, I had like a Yelp review that I don't agree with because she lied in it, but you can look it up. Um, but th those things really sting, you know, and it really like, gosh, why am I doing this again? Like, why am I working so hard and feeling unappreciated? The post-production was also making me want to quit because it, I, I did this so that I could be more creative and be behind a camera, not behind a computer. And I found myself just spending so much time behind a computer that I was like, this is not fun anymore. I didn't want to, I, you know, I'm not a, Lightroom expert or a Photoshop expert, you know, like I'm a photographer, I belong behind a camera, not behind a computer, right? Um, and then the other thing that made me consider quitting was balance. Like I felt like the business was starting to consume my life and I just wasn't enjoying it so much anymore. And I was taking on gigs that wasn't making me happy. And I just felt like there wasn't this balance between the enjoyment of work, the enjoyment of life and, and business, you know, of things. And you know what they say, right? Like what doesn't kill you tries again. <laughs> so the point I'm trying to make here is these things that are killing you in your business, if you don't fix it, it's going to eventually kill you. <laughs> And when I say kill you, like your spirit, your business, you know, your joy, right? So it's really important that we do address it. Like you can't just say like, oh, you know, I'll just tough it out, right? Um, and I thought that for a while, but what I realized is that you can't. You really have to build strong foundational blocks. And when you have strong foundational blocks in your business, what happens is no matter what kind of wind or typhoon or earthquake that comes and tries to shake your business or pandemic, right? 
you will have a strong base to stand on. And 2020 was a year that really showed me um, the benefits of having built that strong foundational block. It took me two years working with coaches, working a lot with myself, building a team, building these strong blocks. And 2020 was when it really put those blocks to the test and made me realize like, oh my gosh, thank goodness I had these strong foundational blocks in place, right? Um, and then just, you know, we're only five minutes in. And so I know people are still kind of tuning in. So just to give a quick reminder, like that's kind of how I built my, um, what I called like nobody's business, which is the next group coaching class and the first in business that I'm hosting. So this one is going to teach you how to thrive like nobody's business. It's all about building a sustainable and profitable business. It's these foundational blocks that I'm talking about that really helped kept me afloat in 2020 and why I didn't take any income loss, right? In this small group coaching program, for any of you who have done it before, who have done small group coaching programs with me, it's similar where there will be pre-recorded classes that you watch on your own. And there's seven seven of those seven so it's like seven chapters then we're going to have eight live zoom classes this is going to happen over 10 weeks because some of those chapters i think is going to require two weeks for you to really do the homework every week there's going to be homework after that we're going to talk about establishing more efficient workflows how to secure consistent income with better marketing maximizing your profits with strategic pricing and packages, attract better clients with a stronger brand presence, identify the tasks that are holding you back from growing so that you can automate and streamline a lot of those processes. Focus more of your energy on being creative. This is by application only. Um, I wanna make sure that I put together like a really good cohort of people that are similar. If I find that there's several of you that are really like in different areas, I may consider opening two separate cohorts, but grouping you guys in similar genres and styles and goals. Um, I do like having some variations in levels because I think it's important that you always have someone who's a step up to help pull you up, but also someone who is a step down that you're helping pull up, right? Because we're kind of essentially creating a chain that we're gonna all continually help pull each other up. So that's the whole point of these small group um, programs that I put together. I think running your own business can very much feel like being on an island and it can be very lonely and especially when no one else understands the struggles that you're going through. So that's what the, the purpose of these are. Um, this is great for anyone who is ready to make more money and work less. Anyone who wants to spend more time behind a computer um, behind a camera and less time behind a computer. And if you want your dream clients to find you rather than you going out there hustling for them all the time. Um, uh, what a healthy business should look like is that you should have time with loved ones. You shouldn't be spending so much time in the business that you're having to say no to, you know, all the important people in life. Your business should be autonomous. Even if you had to step away, if you wanted to travel for a week, if you wanted, if you got ill, right, and hospitalized, your business should be able to continue going on without you needing to micromanage it from the inside. Um, and it should have sustainable income, even if you were out for a week or a month, right? Like you should know that there's income coming in and that it's ready. It's, you should know that you, you know, what your next 12 income projects months projection income projection should look like so that's what this system is that we're going to be working on together um it's a 10-week program seven modules broken down into three to four consumable videos eight study group sessions with me so you watch the pre-recorded videos i give you homework we come together we go over the homework together and then next video homework so every week there's homework for you to do that will eventually get you on the path that is the blueprint I use to have built my multi six figure business. Um, there's also the private Facebook group and PDF worksheets and templates. I have calculators for things like how to calculate packages, um, how to calculate your income, like 
projecting what your year is going to make and where it needs to come from. So there's like spreadsheets with calculators, like really geeky stuff that I enjoyed doing. So um, yeah, you guys can check that out. There's a link to it in the caption and it's by application only. So I look forward to reviewing your application. I know several of you have already um, submitted your application. And if you did, I have started to review them already. So um, I will start reaching out to people in the in the next week or so. So, um, and I see a couple faces here that I've seen the applications for. So I have enjoyed reviewing them and I will be contacting you soon. All right. Um, so today I wanted to focus on a very specific aspect of business and that is about the post-production part. What happens after the shoot, right? Um, some of you just finished my 15 minute portrait bundle um, program and that one taught you how to do awesome shoots. So now that you've done these awesome shoot, what happens after the shoot, right? The idea is to free up your time so that you can get out there doing more shoots. I don't want you to be spending so much time behind a computer that you're not able to be booking more shoots, right? Most of your energy should be spent on booking and shooting less time on all this post-production stuff. So let's talk a little bit about how to speed up your post-production. The first probably most mundane and boring aspect of post-production is culling. How many of you would agree? And for some of you who can be trigger happy and click a lot and with 20 of the same photos are gonna have a lot to cull. If you shoot weddings where you have a second shooter, it might be your second shooter who is very trigger happy. And in, if you are first starting out, perhaps it is safer to have more than not enough photos, right? So, and I know some of you, you know, they call spray and pray where you may be clicking a lot. If you are first starting out and, or if your second shooter is first starting out, I understand that. They, are, they would rather give you more options than not enough options, but that becomes a culling nightmare at the end of the day. Let me ask you this, how many of you guys cull in versus cull out? So how many of you assume that all of your photos are keeps and you're looking for the trash? You're looking for the photos to kick out. I know that's how I was doing it and a lot of people were doing that way versus how many people, um, assume that everything is trash and you're just looking for the photos to keep in. Do you understand the difference, right? Yeah. So my first recommendation to you is call like Marie Kondo. How many of you are familiar with Marie Kondo or the Con Marie, right? So what she always recommends, like for example, if how many of you have cleaned out a closet before, have organized a closet? That is like, right, a, a lot of effort. So for example, if we take closet cleaning as an example, she recommends emptying out the entire closet, put it in the middle of the room and you, we are gonna assume that all of it is trash. Now you are gonna go through this trash pile and only pick out the things that bring you joy, that spark joy, right? Only the ones that you really love, you're gonna bring back and keep. What this does is eliminate the fatigue. Because the more decisions you have to make, the quicker you're gonna get tired. So by doing this, you're automatically not having to go through some of the stuff that doesn't even catch your attention. It saves you the, the brain energy of even having to think, do I need to keep this or not, right? So we're gonna cull with that same mentality where we're at the end of the shoot, we are gonna assume that everything is trash including you and your second shooter. And we're only gonna bring back the things that bring us joy. So this already eliminates you from having to look at a lot of your second shooter's work. Because to me, I find that that is, I wasn't even there behind their camera. For me to now have to look through their stuff is like draining, you know? But what I'm gonna do is only look for the things that bring me joy. So I go through it and I only keep the ones that I absolutely love. Um, Things that I remember from the day of that I'm going to be looking for. Oh, I remember I made that really awesome portrait of them. Where is that? Right? Like those are the stuff I'm looking for. Then from my second shooter stuff, it's like, what am I missing? I wasn't there when the grooms were getting ready. So grooms, <laughs> groom, when the groom was getting ready. So let me find that. Right. 
and you're only plucking in the stuff that absolutely brings you joy. So call like Marie Kondo. Um, that way you're not having to go through all, and especially dancing photos, when there's like a whole ton of dancing photos, you don't want to have to be looking through every single one, right? And analyzing every single eyeball. Now, um, the second advice I have is utilize any automation tools that there are. I recently discovered um, a new program called Kodak Professional Select. Have any of you guys heard this before? Know that I am not a fan of subscription, okay? Like I, I don't, I like to minimize the number of subscriptions that I do. However, some of these new technology stuff really does make your life easier. This is essentially a culling software that uses artificial intelligence. So this in and of itself is going to cut your culling time. Like yesterday we did a wedding just to, and we timed it from start to finish. And we were able to get it loaded onto the system, culled, edited, um, like into a Lightroom catalog and all that within an hour. So how many of you would like to be able to call weddings, call edit, right? Like that would just save time. And you can imagine how much faster it does for portrait sessions. So I'm going to share with you little snip, um, snippets of it. So the way that this works, and I recommend run this overnight. So when you come home after a shoot, when you come home after a wedding, back up all of your cards, and once your cards are all backed up, make sure they're all there. That's the first thing I do just so that I can free up my cards for future shoots and that way I don't have to worry about missing any photos. Back it all up locally, make sure it's all there. Once it's there, you're gonna drag and drop all of it into this software here. And you're gonna wait for it to load. Once it's done processing, what it spits back. So this is a portrait session, okay? This was a newborn session that I just shot. This was work I had to have done yesterday anyway. So that's why I screenshot it to share with you guys. So in this newborn session, I shot 238 photos. The software detected that 97, 97 of them were unique, which is consistent with me because I don't shoot a lot of duplicates. So that means that I shot maybe two or three of the same, you know, pose before moving on to the next, right? So 97, and then it grouped it up to five different events. So either five different scenes, five different groupings that it found five different scenes for. There's a slider here. So 97, I can keep all 97, or I can make it be more strict. I can slide it down to say 75. At this point, though, I prefer to manually go through it because it's not that many anyway and make sure that I'm picking the duplicates that I prefer. But let's say that this is a wedding or let's say that I want to do this for a teaser. I can slide this down to, say, 10. Right. Or if this is a wedding, say 25, 30. And then that way it will give you like just the highlights already. And then you can immediately use that for however you want it to look. So um, I this is essentially how it loads up it groups it up and you can see right now i'm going to share screen with a live project right now so selena if you can go ahead and share the working computers monitor let's see do i have to stop sharing screen for you to here i'm going to stop sharing my screen okay perfect so um you guys can see the screen yes okay cool so you can see here this is the newborn session that i just shot and you can see it grouped up by a couple right like there's um you know one it looks like a couple of the siblings three is the individuals of this newborn what's group four group four looks like you know all similar poses of the mom and dad group five looks like family photos. If you scroll down, it looks like all similar, like family shots of them, right? So it, get, it breaks it down. This though, I think is especially awesome for events because that's where it's gonna break it up into ceremony, cocktail hour, couple portraits, wedding party portraits, right? It will detect all of that for you already. So now let's say, so right now we, we kind of played around with it already. So it, narrowed it down to 69 photos 
if we go through, let's click on, let's say, do you see the one that says number five? Or actually, no, let's go with number three. Sorry. Let, yeah, let's stick with that one. So this one here says that there's three similar photos. So you can see this one here is what the AI detected as the was the best of the three. But let's see the other two options. So it probably didn't choose this because it didn't see its face, but I actually love it. So let's say I actually want to keep this then you can split this from the duplicate. So you can tell the computer, this is actually not a duplicate, this is a unique photo. So now we split that apart. And then when you go back, it is now considered a unique photo. See, and it kept, it kept two of them. Let's click on the five, two photos over. I wanna see what it detected as duplicates. So you can see all the different expressions. Let's scroll through. Okay, he blinked there, he blinked there. Um, that is blurry and out of focus. So you can see the AI did a good job of picking the best of these duplicates here, right? And I think even the one on the right, he made a funny face, but you can see if you did like it, you can split it and say, nope, make this a unique photo. But if not, I think that's the best. If let's say I like this right photo, do you see set as primary? You can, let's say that the AI, you know, subjectively, wasn't able to decide and I actually like this expression better, you can say set as primary and it will make that as the primary. But I think the AI already detected the best primary. So let's scroll through a little bit down um, some more. Um, actually, wait, hold on, go back again. Okay, scroll down. Oh, let's go back to the middle one. So let's make that as primary. Okay, see, so then now that's the primary, the others are duplicates. So go back. So now we have unique photos that shows the, um, these. So let's go down and you can uncheck anything that you don't wanna keep. But at this point, it's already done most of the hard, most of the hard work for you already. Um, some of it, you know, is subjective, right? So there's like a close up. like if you go back up to these family photos here, there's a close up and far away versions of each of them. Yeah, like just this little cluster here, you can see like three of them are, or two of them are pretty, like one is far, one is close. So you can either keep both because you like the different angles or you could just unclick the one, but at least you can see at the bottom, you see how there's four of the duplicates of that one and two, you don't have to look through four of them to decide the best, right? Like the AI already decided which one had everyone's eyes open for you. So this has been saving me a lot of time because, you know, I let this run overnight, go to bed, I wake up in the morning and I just have to check which one are the best ones. And at that point, um, I am going to share screen again with you guys. Uh, I have so many windows open. <laughs> okay, share screen. Okay, cool. So yeah, once once I've done that, um, there's these other features that you can set shortcuts to. So if you wanted to like, you know, rating system. So for, for example, my rating system, one star means keep. Two star is if I have to do any eyeball swaps, then I do two stars for them. Um, four stars is a highlight. Three star is if I have to do a second round. So let's say that I delivered the photos and the clients came back and said, oh, like we're looking for these photos and I have to do a second round of adding more photos in, then I three star those. And then four star is anything that's a highlight that I might want to either use on my social media or if I want to submit it to the planner or some, or give the couple a sneak peek, the family a sneak peek, then I do four stars for that. Five is like portfolio hero, worthy, you know, that a year from now, I will want to look for this photo, then I will five star that one. So that's kind of my rating system. But you can set it to however you want to set it, you can do all your keywords here, you can rotate left and right, which is awesome. Um, especially if you a lot of your work is good straight out of camera. And also sometimes it's you could just see it better if you rotate it. So I love um, having all of this being able to just be right there for me. Um, the other thing is, let's say that if you want to combine photos, you are able to merge, merge them, um, merge it together. 
And then this is an example that I had earlier showing, like it shows the duplicate photos. Um, these are screenshots just in case the live, live sharing screen didn't work for me. So I had backups in case. <laughs> now, this part is the best part. This is gonna come out in a new update that will be released, I believe this week. But let's say that you are all done. You have selected all of your keeps. You can now drag and drop it into Lightroom and now it will create a catalog or well, it will and I'll add it into the catalog for you and you are ready to edit in, edit in Lightroom. And I will actually go over some of that with you guys today. But that whole process would take only a couple minutes because the AI already did most of it for you. But when you wake up, you're just determining whether, you know, narrowing it down to like the 69 or whatever photos that you prefer, right? And then drag and drop. Um, depending on how quickly your catalogs are made, you know, you, that could be a good time to go make your morning coffee and then come back and your catalog is already for you guys. So if you are interested in trying it out, there's actually a one month free trial for this. You can get it at um, k, kproselect.com. Try out the one month free trial. It's a full version too. It's not like there's no... Um, tools that are being omitted from you guys. I would recommend signing up like right be right after a shoot. So whenever your next shoot is, sign up for it, maximize that one month, you know, so that you can play around with it and make sure that you love it. I think you're going to love it because it's really helped me and my team with our culling process already. Um, and then especially for those of you who are like, I can't afford an assistant yet. I can't or, you know, I don't know how to hire people yet. Like they just made that process easy because I know when I was hiring people to call, they were charging five cents per image. So that, and that's per image of what you're submitting, not per keep, right? So you can imagine like if you had a wedding that had, you know, a thousand photos, right? You're already paying like 50 bucks right there for one event. So for me, this subscription made sense in that way because it made up for the cost that I would have had to pay for someone who call anyway. Um, and then you can get 10% off with KPro Trend 10. It is case sensitive. I recommend just taking a screenshot right now of this so you can refer back to it later. Um, and if you have any questions about this, I will answer it in probably about like another 10 minutes. Give me 10 minutes, I'm gonna talk about um, post-processing, and then we'll come back to Q&As about, about everything. All right, so the next thing that I recommend that really helps with your post-production, um, so let's say that you have now dragged everything into Lightroom, your catalog has been created. The next step into automating that workflow is um, using presets. Whether you have your own or whether you want to borrow mine, um, here, I, before I share a screen, go ahead and take a picture of this or a screen share of this. This, and th there's also clickable links in the Facebook Live caption so that you don't have to type it in. But in case, um, this will also help you get 20% off as well. So, all right, I'm gonna let my working computer share screen and I'm gonna share with you a live. So that session that we just called using um, Kodak Professional Select, is now ready for editing. So let's show you how we can get through that really fast. How do I, okay, stop share, there we go. So this is the, our Lightroom. So we have already dragged and dropped, saving you time. I'm not showing you that process, right? So we've already pre-done this for you. So we, we um, Kodak Professional Select already selected the photos that we liked. We hardly touched any of it. It's just like kind of what I was showing you a little bit of that. We dragged and dropped it into this catalog. So now, because most of this was shot all in the same room, what I do is just kind of go through the different preset options and see what I like. Um, so let's say I have two black and white options. So I kind of run through that. Oh, I, I love the black and white options. If I do give a black and white, I typically also give a color option too, just so that they don't have to come back later and say, Oh, like, can I have it in color, right? It's just easier for me to just do it off the bat. Um, so then now let's go through the colors. There's patina, 
patina one, patina two, patina three. Like all of these have like very like beautiful film-like quality to it. Let's go to pure. Here is like a very clean, clean, but soft. So if you like muted tones, like pure is a good one for you. So pure, oh, pure plus, pure plus plus. And these are super subtle based on um, preferences. And then vibrant, I typically prefer vibrant for like colorful type of shoots or happy shoots like outdoor, you know, like a commercial shoots. All of my commercial shoots are vibrant. So you can see vibrant, vibrant, um, plus vibrant, plus plus. Now, to me, this is not a vibrant type of shoot. To me, this would be more of like a pure type of shoot, right? And it, the name says it itself too. It's a newborn shoot. I want it to look like very um, soft and quiet, right? So let's look at the different pure options. So pure one, uh, pure plus, pure plus plus. Um, gosh, it's so, let's see. I like pure plus plus. Let's go with pure plus plus. Okay, so we're gonna choose pure plus plus. And then I like to add just grain, like just one level of grain. So to let you understand how gr my grain works, I, if I do black and white, I like to do grain plus plus because then that one makes it look very film-like. You know, like I like the heavier grain for that, but for my color, I like to just keep it really simple. So now I just select all and sync because I think that already looks pretty good. Like I don't have to touch anything else with that. Um, so select all sync. Um, I remove any kind of spot removal and crop, but I keep um, and local adjustments because those are and those are too specific. But aside from that, yeah, I keep everything else and then I synchronize. And to be honest, for the most part, my editing is done in, in this situation. So you can see it was done in just a few minutes, but but I do scroll through it just to double check and make sure that you know, some of it, we might have to lift some shadows, I see. So um, let's go with the one where he's kissing her because that one seems like a little bit dark in comparison. And I think that's because he's looking down at her. So if you like the more light and airy look, I recommend lifting the shadows rather than lifting exposure. When you lift exposure, it makes everything brighter, including the highlights. And that's why a lot of people who go for the light and airy look mistakenly ends up making the photo just look blown out. Um, I think the computer's a little bit, there we go. Okay. I think it's because we did the sync live and so you're seeing it processing right now, but okay. So let's try lifting the shadows up on this one. Um, and I think it could pro this one could probably use a little bit of exposure bump. He's looking down, so it's like hard to see, but let's go with more of the shadows. Okay. Could we do like a before and after just to show? So you could see like it just added like just the right amount of warmth. You could do a side by side before and after too. So go to the, um, okay. Is it lagging or is it freezing? Yeah, I think it's lagging. Caroline, Wait. if yeah. you select Y, Y, yeah. it will give you the before and after. Yeah, we do have it, but I think the program is lagging and it's not okay. showing. I Maybe it's still processing the, why is it not showing the after? Um, click Y, Y again, so it's fine. Uh, y, Y, and it has several options, click again. Yeah, do the side by side. I like the Pick side, that, side one. Yeah, that one. I like that one. Yeah, but it's not loading the. Okay. Go. 
go back to the just the single view that after there huh so now click the yy yeah huh I'm that is sure. weird that is weird try clicking the image before it since we didn't do edits to that one yeah, yeah i'm not sure i think the computer is kind of can you make sure to kill all other programs that are, or is there any other program running on that computer right now? But it looks like Lightroom is thinking, because if you look at the bottom right corner, it's, there's a circle that is moving. The, the program is so overwhelmed by the beauty of your pictures that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, you know, to be honest, I think the after is too yellow. Well, you did a different picture originally. You did the him kissing the baby was oh, the one that true. you were, was the one that you're working on. Oh, that's true. Okay. Here, cool this cool it down. Or maybe even use the white dropper and drop it on his shirt. Pull it down a bit. Maybe editing through Zoom is not the most <laughs> proper, but you guys get the general idea, right? I think white balance is so subjective that, you know, some people like it cooler, some people like it um, warmer. And so, um, I don't know if it's actually changing anything right now. I think it's I can definitely see a difference in the after. Yeah, okay. it's changed. Lighter. Okay. Cool. Look at his his cheek skin is lighter. Yeah. The skin of his hand as well is is lighter. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's go back to just the single big view so we can see um yeah, I think my computer is not liking that I'm having so many programs running <laughs> at the same time and actually live processing it um, on set. That's why I screenshot some stuff for you guys just so that in case this happened. But yeah, you can see like it's, yeah, now it's like too cool. Yeah, there's definitely a lag going on. Okay, so I'm not gonna live, live edit this right now because there's too much um, lag time going on. I don't wanna kill your time. But you can see that, you know, go back to library view again warm this a tad up again it's just so cool and then let's go back to library view yeah and you can just let's just do a scroll in library view just so that we can see everything but this essentially is what we called it down to to what our keep is and for the most part Right, like dropping the preset in, I would only have to adjust possibly white balance and um, the shadow, the levels of the shadows a little bit. And again, those are pretty, I think, like I said, white, temp, white balance is subjective, right? So you can only automate so much of it. Some of it you're gonna have to go in and tweak for a little bit. You can see that Kodak Select did a great job of choosing like the best of the photos. There's not too many redundancies here and if there are there's like a reason for it there's a difference um can you open back up to the codex select actually let me let me give that computer time to um hold on i'm going to share my screen again while and then get codex select back up on that one again but okay yeah so you can see that you know for the most part um once you get the culling all done for you right and then drag and drop into that the preset does most of the editing for you it really just saves a lot of time um when when the codec is ready again let me know or actually just share screen when you are when you are ready again. Um, so I will take Q&A while we wait for, while we open up Kodak again to, um, if you guys have any more questions. I think that's like kind of the new shiny toy and I expect more questions to come related to that. Um, all right, I see a hand raised. Nicole, yes. 
Hi, um, that is unbelievable. I actually cannot believe it. Anyway, um, so my questions are, first of all, like what happens to the, the photos that it rejects? Do, can you tag those rejected ones? Yep. And, um, or are you just leaving them and not even bringing them into Lightroom? So I guess that's one question. Yeah, and I have a- right. I, I have don't, my... I only bring the keeps into Lightroom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you just delete the other ones so that you're, they're done. So yeah. I don't, I don't delete it permanently. I have a reject folder in that I keep for a little bit, just in case people come back and you know, ask. So I still keep my rejects. And um, now that I'm doing education, I keep rejects because sometimes it's good for to show the rejected stuff. It does take up a lot of space. Um, so you may not need to keep it, but I do recommend keeping it at least until people sign off on it. Okay. Um, until you've delivered and clients are happy with it. And do you know if you don't use Lightroom, because I, I really kind of moved over to Capture One and I love it. And um, I mean, I do love Lightroom too, but Capture One was allowing me to do a lot more to it without having to go out into Photoshop. Um, and uh, so so I'm just wondering, is there a way to export those, those selected photos or the pics, the, the selected oh, ones? There's to, to to like another directory instead of like dragging it into Lightroom. Yeah, actually, um, Kathy, can I welcome you on stage right now? I think hi, you can. sure. Hi. Kathy Absolutely. is with Kodak. Come on and, and she, say hi. <laughs> she is like my technical person when I have questions, and so she would be able to answer this a lot better than than I can. Hi, <laughs> hi everybody. Hi. <laughs> this is Kathy. Um, thanks so much, Caroline. It's, it's awesome to see this in action and uh, you're such a great inspiration. So thank you to everyone on the call. So um, yeah, we did enable the direct Lightroom integration at first. That's the drag and drop. Um, but we also have a way to just export images to um, a desired location that you choose. So you'll just go ahead and export those selected images and then you'll use your capture one process to, to bring those in. So that's a great question and that should be fine. And if you try it or get stuck or have questions, we have great ways to communicate with us right with inside the application. So I hope you give it a shot. Oh yeah, and like I'm literally signing up right now. That is great. just amazing, amazing. Well done. Awesome, thank you. Enjoy it then, enjoy yes, I will. Yeah, I love that smile, <laughs> <laughs> that stress. That's I'm just like, oh my smile. god! <laughs> and, and is there no limit to the number of images that you can do for that price, or are you going to cut me off at some point? Oh no, 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 no! It doesn't work that. Way. There's no tiers. It's not a tiered structure. So, wow. Okay. Call and select away, but keep in touch, please. I will. Yeah, I definitely will. Thanks, Kathy. Thank, 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 you. thank you. Thank you. Great question. Yeah, Nicole, those were really good questions. Thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, like feel free to raise your hand. Um, but otherwise, I guess to, to summarize it, I would, I would say make sure that you come into calling with the mindset of you're only looking for what to keep. Um, so that way, like honestly, what I would do when I'm looking through, um, can we go ahead and share our codex select screen again, please? Okay. So when I when I look through this, I actually do not click on the duplicates unless I know that I am either missing a photo or there could be a better one. Because again, th think of it as cleaning out the closet, right? Like you don't want to be digging through the trash, right? Like, because you know, if you really dig through the trash, you can find a reason to want to keep everything. Right. So we don't want to fall into that trap. And a lot of this, I think, has to do with mindset and being able to let go of not seeing everything. Right. So if I scroll through this, like, so let's kind of just do a slow scroll down. So far, I like these images. Um, I, if I see one that maybe Kodak selected that maybe isn't the best one, then, then I might click in. 
if it's a group shot that like, let's see the one where he's covering his eyes. That one, I see five duplicates of that one. Okay, so yeah, that really is a duplicate. So this one, okay, this might be kind of interesting now because this one specifically, I asked him how old he was. And so he said, I'm four. So that's actually kind of cool. I, I would want to split that now from the duplicate, right? Um, so let's let's keep that one. And yeah, I think the rest of it is fine. We got a good, we got one jumping one that he was in focus and um, even the one where he's covering his eyes, I like the way the parents are looking up at him. So that was great. So let's go back to unique photos. Um, and if you notice, like I don't click the duplicates unless I know that I remember playing around with it and that there might be more options. But other than that, if it looks good enough, like for example, that family picture of um, the seven right here, right? If I look at it, like that looks good already. I don't need to click in it, but for the sake of this program, let's go ahead and click and see what other options. Okay. So boy has a funny face there. Um, that one is okay, but the one that Kodak Select chose is the better one. So let's go down. Yep. He made, he was kind of looked downward gaze on that one. That one is kind of like a blank face. Go down. Silly face, yeah, she's not looking at the camera either. Um, that could be sweet. You know, I like that he's kissing, the dad's kissing the boy, mom's looking away, does that bother me? If I kept this, I might wanna just crop in super tight and make it a moment about, actually, let's do that. Let's split it from the duplicate. And then um, in the post-production, like let's really zoom in and make that about, dad and boy for example see so yeah if you were to just i don't know how much what's the max zoom on here that you, that you're able to do but if we obviously once we carry it over to lightroom then we can really play around with that more right but i would i would probably if i annotate this can you see my annotations stop for a second can you see me just drawing that line right now? Okay, they were, wait, no, keep sharing screen. I was annotating your screen. Okay. Okay, zoom in a little bit more. Annotate, okay. So, draw a square. Okay, so pause for a second right there. All right. So we can probably, once we bring this into Lightroom, we can crop this to be, I don't know, something like that, right? So I'm shooting with the GFX 100S for this. So these are over a hundred megapixels per image. So I know that even if I was to crop it in like this, I would still have like you know, a healthy amount of megapixels that I can play with. So for something like this, I didn't know. This was not a, I didn't tell dad to kiss the sun. Like this, he made a funny face. Dad thought it was cute and went in for the kiss, right? It was completely spontaneous, but I'm glad I got it. Mom was looking funny, so we can just crop her out of it and make this, you know, really a moment about them, for example, right? But, um, okay, I excel. All right, so let's go back to unique photos again. But yeah, that would be my biggest takeaway is just trust the process, you know, don't look for the trash, like look for only if you know that something might be missing or that there may be a better variation of it. But you, there's no need to click on every single duplicate um, of the photos. So go like just keep scrolling down. I just wanted to just kind of show people like an idea of what the collection of photos are at the end. Yeah, so it had like a lot of different variations. Some of it was, you know, a little bit on the heavier side, which I preferred anyway. So it's easier for me to just eliminate a few of a few of them at that point. But yeah, so that was a newborn session. Um, any any questions about? About so, that. so it it selected seventy two of one hundred fourteen. 
it actually selected 72 of 200 and um, 200 and something. Oh, that's right. Because that 239 was your original number. And yep. then, um, but then you, uh, um, here it's got 72 of 114. If there are some that you, everything with a check mark, is that what's going to be exported or everything on the page is going to be exported? Everything on the check mark. So I okay. took 200. So if you uncheck something, then it won't be exported. Yep, correct. Yeah, so I took 238 photos. Codex Select made it down to 114, and then we further narrowed it down to 72. Oh, okay. So then what you, the green check mark is the 72 that we decided to keep, and then we exported that 72 into Lightroom. Okay. But this already, you know, prevented me from having to look through 238 photos for the oh, yeah. wedding, no that's fabulous yeah for the wedding one was even more awesome for the wedding this weekend's wedding between me and my second shooter we shot four different cameras because i have two she has two right we had four different cameras there was um four thousand images like almost four thousand images codex select narrowed it down to like just just over a thousand so i think i think it narrowed it actually i think it was 1400 that it narrowed it down to and then from there we then narrowed it down to like 750 or something like that but you can see it cut down over half like it cut down like a more than a third even yeah for us to have so you at, at the beginning you used a little slider thing mm -hmm. or you pointed out the slider you didn't use it but um yeah. If you're to go back and use the slider, what would that criteria be as to selecting, you know, if you, instead of 72, you slid it down to 30, what's the further criteria that is going to narrow it down to even 30? Yeah, I, Kathy, I don't know, would you be able to speak to the algorithm? I, like how I does... love, I love that question. It's an awesome question. And so often we look forward to these questions so that we can say to ourselves, oh my gosh, I, I meant to tell you that, you know, but it's it's great to tell you in response to that really great question. So thanks. So the way the algorithm works is it wants to do a, a, a few things. And one priority, like when you take that slider down to 30 images, maybe for you know, this very specific need, maybe a sneak peek or something. So you take that slider down to 30 and you say, go, I can't remember what the button is, C create new selections or something like that. Um, uh, so we'll still pick the ones out of, you know, out of the bunch that, that bubble to the top as far as eyes open and smiles and, and, and brightness and contrast and, you know, all the other aesthetic and technical attributes that it looks at. But what it also does, everyone, is it'll make sure that the entire event from beginning to end is represented. So there's a whole oh. priorities there going on at the same time. And one of those weighted priorities is, hey, I'm going to get some of these best, best of the best, really, across the entire event. So it's so much fun to play with that, that slider. Um, at this point, all the really time consuming stuff is already done, you know, like all the images have been scored. And so that's why you can make those changes like that really fast and, and you know, check that out very, very quickly. Uh, I think you'll enjoy running that that thought process that you have, you know, your question, I think you'll really enjoy running that yourself to see the results. Kathy, if we wanted to try it on this, on this event right now to show people, will it like, oh, example, yeah, that's right. You're, you're live here. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yeah, this is live. So on, in the right hand panel. Yep. You can just yep. take that slider down to, you know, 30 or something. And yeah, that's exactly what we would see. And then apply changes. Well, you have two choices. You can say apply changes, and it will actually work with everyone the images that are already selected. Like assuming that you've like given your your okay on all of these green checks. So maybe it's a matter of like, okay, I like this 
the, this set of selection. So if you apply changes, it'll pick 30 across the event from these selections that you're already aware of and maybe you've already approved of and confirmed yourself. So you can go ahead and choose apply changes and you could always get right back to. Yeah. Um, I also want to point out to you guys this menu on the right side, if you see, um, you can have you can tell the AI how to prioritize things. So for example, like how important is it that the brightness is correct? Right. If you know you're going to fix that anyway, then maybe that's not that's of low importance to you. Um, like for contrast as well. Right. So we, we leave it just kind of as medium. But yeah, if it's if you are looking for straight out of camera and you know you're not going to edit any and you need it to just pick it right, then you can say high priority. Make sure that, you know, my contrast and my brightness is already correct because I don't want to fix it. Um, this could also work if you're trying to do like say a sneak peek right away and you just need something that will be exported and immediately displayed without running it through any kind of editing software. Another one is like sharpness priority. How important is it? Because for example, if you shoot 1.2 or 1.0, like I like to do, um, it might think it's blurry or out of focus, but that might be because I shoot super shallow and I actually don't mind things being slightly not sharp, right? So then I would say like, you know, low, but what you're seeing me run this through is everything just straight down the middle, just average of everything right now. But you can definitely, you know, um, make it more strict or less strict on certain aspects and face importance, you know, like if you're possibly doing like a product shoot, face may, may be not important at all and you can make that low. All right. So um, is there I, any, are there any tricks then for landscape or buildings or, you know, other commercial photography uses than just portraits and weddings? Well, if, if I could jump in, Caroline, is okay? I'm sorry. I should wait for you. No, no, go ahead. Um, it, you know, one thing that it, we, we love experimental use of, of, of select for sure. We, we have written it and use the algorithms that are best in, you know, the wedding and in, in, in portrait world. But, you know, we've had aerial photographers say, well, heck, 30% of the, the photographs I take are out of focus. Would it help by just like not giving those out of focus? Because that's one of the, the considerations, right? That's one of the criteria. Uh, would it help with just eliminating my out of focus shots for me? And we have every belief, we don't do a lot of testing with anything other than than wedding or portrait, but being that we give this fully, you know, loaded 30 day trial, I, we would love it if you, if you gave it a test run, we'd love it if you share your, you know, information and results with us on any other work would be wonderful for us to learn more about, you know, directly from those of you who are shooting other or types of, of work and events. Hope How do you share that? Oh, just by communicating with, with us. So it, within the 30 day trial, we have contact us within the, the menu, within the application. Um, we certainly have ways to contact us at our kproselect.com uh, kpro website. So yeah, just our contact us, um, you know, it, it, it'll get through to Molly, it'll get through to myself. Um, I, I know that Molly sends additional communications um, another member of our, our, our select team. I know she sends additional communications directly from us for anyone who does sign up for a trial. So there's lots of ways to reach out. We'd love to, we'd love to hear it. If you'd share that, that'd be great. I was going to just address, um, just Anna's question real quickly to everyone. So she was asking like, so you can either, when you're done with it, drag it all into a Lightroom catalog for editing immediately, or you can export it into a folder. So the way that I was doing it, because this is a new feature that's not really, that's not out yet with the current version I have, but I was giving you guys a sneak peek of it. So the way that we had always done it before this program existed in our life was once we call everything to keep, um, we then create a folder that's called to edit. And that's essentially our keep folder. So then we save everything into the to edit folder and then everything else gets into the discard folder. So that way, whenever we open up the client's project, it's not loading every single 
file again, right? And especially when I'm shooting giant files like this. So now with this, we can drag it directly into a Lightroom catalog and or we can you can create the folder. For example, if you want to do the highlights of 30 photos, you can then export this into a folder called highlights that you will send to whoever you want to send it to. And then, you know, your to edit folder, which is everything else you want to edit. Um, I see, um, let's take Tamar's question. Hi, um, I have a couple of questions. So with this software, the 34 of 114 that we're seeing are not including those plus three or plus five or plus seven that's amongst the image that we see currently, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. those are like collapsed. And, but there's a check okay. box, do you see on the right? Right. Where it says group. So you can, um, like, is that what you're saying? Like, if you can expand, like, if you Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, like, like for that image that you're currently on, there's that box of three. So yeah. it's not including the duplicates. It's just counting for the primary photos, correct? Yes. The, okay. I think I understand your question. Yeah, there's a total Sorry. of 238 <laughs> photos. If you count right. all the duplicates, there's 238. Right, okay. they're still all there, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Caroline, as far as your process, and once you take this into Lightroom, do your editing, that is what you then put in, then send to your client as your, as your process from there. And that's what they get to choose from. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Got it. Thank yeah, so you. they don't even see the duplicates. They don't see the rest of it. That's like the, it's like when I say cleaning out the closet, right? It's like the trash. Like don't even, don't start digging through it. That's the hardest part for me. <laughs> I know you have to just be able to let go. And like I was saying, it's a mindset shift, you know, that you have to just keep the ones that, you know, give you joy. You know, you have enough that bring you joy. If you don't remember it, it probably wasn't that important anyway. Right. Like during the photo session, I do this right after. So I will remember like, oh my God, what, what about that time when I asked him how old he was? Like, I remember that moment, right. Then you look for it. Cause, but if you forgot about it, it probably wasn't that significant anyway. Yeah, I struggle with like the the nostalgia or like, oh, but that moment was so cute or, oh, you look so cute here. It's like that constant like, oh, but, oh, but, and then give them way too many options. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah. I'm seeing that, for hours. That is what causes fatigue. And yeah. that is also what is really hard about um, honestly cleaning up your own portfolio. Because some, I'm there too. Sometimes like I'll look at a photo, I'm like, oh my God, but I remember how hard it was to make this photo. Like it took me 15 <laughs> minutes just to get that mediocre face. I mean, I didn't, I won't admit that it's mediocre. You know? but at the end of the day, if I objectively look at the photo, it's mediocre, but I know it took me 15 minutes to set it up <laughs> to get, you know? And so you hold on for these emotional attachment reasons, but I think that's what like the AI has really helped me with is freeing me in a lot of that. And when you can accept to just let it go, it removes a lot of those emotional decision-making process, which causes fatigue over time, right? Like, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, you only have so much brain capacity, you know, in a day, where do you want to spend that energy? And it's not going to be in culling. <laughs> Yeah. Thank so, you. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Uh, let's take uh, Mary's question. Actually, mine wasn't a question. It was really just a statement. Um, you said that for your for the wedding, you had uh, just under a thousand photos. So if uh, if you paid five cents per photo at, at three thousand five hundred you would have spent $1,750 on that. So just that alone is like, it's worth its weight in gold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I was just really amazed by that. Like, like cause I hadn't, I don't think we really think about how much it costs us to, to pay per culling. And mm -hmm. like, like just that alone, it's like, it's worth its weight in gold. Yeah. And you know what I like about thinking in terms of outsourcing even if you don't outsource, I find that us as solopreneurs, we forget to pay ourselves. 
anything that we can do ourselves, we tend to think it's free because it's just our own time. But when you start to really think about having like, why is like, why is some, you know, random person like even if like even if it's like one of the cheap stereotypical culling people over in india right why is their time worth more than your time like that is like when it's like a reality check for me right like when i was not willing to pay them i don't know 50 dollars to call the session for me and then i think wait why like how is it that their time is suddenly worth more like you know so that's where it really starts to make you aware of the inefficiencies that you're doing right because in that $50 that you know it's not the $50 it's the or whatever you know like the subscription fee now is right it's the time that you're saving it's that time that you can't get back right money we can always earn again but time you can't get back so if you spend if you sit here for three hours editing this calling and editing this that's three hours you could have been spending on social media like on marketing on networking on another photo shoot right on creating more sample work for example wherever you are in your business right um so it's really about just freeing up time is i think is what, what you're really winning here all right john thank you so much for waiting that's fine uh, i have a question probably to kathy there for, for the kodak to it, my portraits tend to be animals and they tend to be in motion and I tend to be shooting in burst mode several times to it. You think that program would be a benefit for me to help call out all of those uh, multiple ones? Because for me, just like you, I can pull up a thousand shots in one, in one setting. That's a really great question. You know, it's another territory that we have not done, you know, any, any testing with, but so much of our algorithm success is based on finding faces, um, you know, eyes are, are key and, but even other like top of the head and bottom of the chin. So there's a lot of uh, mathematical stuff that goes into trying to find a face or faces within, within the photo. And, and then the, when faces can't be found, they sort of go into a, a detail shot bucket would it still be able to eliminate your out of focus? Would it still group similar image content together? I, I just can't say for sure, but um, it, it would be an area we would, you know, be interested in, you know, seeing any feedback you might have, or it just might not be, you know, wired for, for that. And I think you would find out very, very quickly from installing the app free trial and, and the free trial, you know, I'm sure you heard this, but just to reinforce it, you know, nothing auto charges you. So you wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, so free trial, check it out quick. And you'd sort of know if it was a solution that you might be looking for or not. I hope that there helps. was a, there was a question related to film and how it handles film. So as you guys know, I shoot hybrid both film and digital and I, the software works just as it would. So it detects all of the AI just the same, like, you know, in terms of contrast, lighting, blinks, expressions and stuff. The only thing that you would lose is, um, oh shoot, I forgot I have a, I have another meeting right now. <laughs> okay, but let me just answer this question real quickly. So the only thing that you would lose is like timestamps, for example, like you couldn't sort, but that's an issue. When you shoot film, you're gonna be dealing with that anyway. Like it's not going to be able to sort by time, right? Because there's no timestamp of when you took it. The timestamp is going to be when the photo was scanned, when the negative was scanned and when that JPEG was created is when the AI will think that photo was created. So it won't get lumped together with the other stuff. But um, Kathy, anything you want to add about film, about shooting analog film and digital? That's that's the perfect ad that you, that you contribute. Thank you. That's perfect, Caroline. I don't think I have anything other than to add other than that, that's great. Cool, all right. Well, um, I am reminded I have another yeah. <laughs> call to take. So if you guys have any other questions, um, like feel free to ask in the, in the Facebook group. And if you sign up for the free trial, you can go ahead and reach like any technical questions, you can ask 
you know, Kodak directly those technical questions. But if you have any questions about like workflow and, you know, how I incorporate it into my life and world, like, yeah, let, let me know. So, all right, everyone. Sorry, I have to jump off so abruptly. I forgot, um, <laughs> but I'll see you guys again. All right. Thank Bye. you, Caroline. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.